Share screen. Yes. Uh, on behalf of Global Academy of uh, Holistic Leadership and Coaching and Prerna Televisions Canada, I would like to welcome you uh, uh, to our leadership speaker series. Today, we are very happy. Today is our having 26 uh, episode. And we we are very happy is our um, regular speaker, our trainer, advocate, uh, Jiao Rahman is with us. And he is the CEO of IITM and he is adjunct faculty of IUB. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Advocate Jia Rahman, uh, for your contributions, and uh, we really appreciate. And on behalf also from the audience uh, around the globe, uh, we'd like to um, have your deepest appreciation to you because uh, we got a lot of feedbacks that these actually sessions, they're enjoying these sessions. Thank you very much, Advocate Jia Rahman, for your contribution. So we are. Um, now you can share your screen and you can continue your session, please. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let me, I'm trying to get my thing to work. It's always a big problem at times. Just just give me a second, let me bring it out first. Can you see my screen? Oh, this is a Facebook coming. Sorry, unfortunately, this Facebook page. So you can stop the screen or just go to another page. Okay, let me try again. Yes. I think it will work now. Yes. You and can uh, just full screen and you can continue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good evening. Good evening in Canada and good morning in Bangladesh. Uh, today we are having another session on leadership and culture. Uh, we have been having this session for the last 25, 26 session. And today's topic is leadership and culture. We, we start off with normally a quotation on, on the issue of leadership or culture. So today's uh, quotation starts with uh, Stephen Covey. We know who Stephen Covey is. Strength lies in differences, not in similarities. I will come back and explain each one of them separately. So I'm just reading out the quotations at first. The second one is the beauty of the world lies in the drivers, lies in the diversity of its people. The beauty of the world lies in the diversity of its people. The crucial differences that distinguish human societies and human beings are not biological, they are cultural, Ruth Benedict. And the next one is by Robert Allen. Cultural differences should not separate us from each other, but rather cultural diversity brings a collective strength that can benefit all of humanity. So these are the quotations. So let me come back to the, the first one. Uh, what does Stephen Covey try to say in this quotation? He's talking about the idea that when you have 
people of diverse understanding, diverse background, diverse knowledge base, diverse cultural adaptation and orientation, you are going to get a different perspective. You're going to get a viewpoint that is coming from different domains, different cultural understanding. Uh, so it kind of strengthens the entire organization, be it a social, political, or business organization. You will get dimensions which are so diverse coming from different Back, ethnic background, religious background, ge geographical background. So very important as a leader to be able to accommodate these differences in the strengths of people and the knowledge base of people. Coming to the next one, this is by an unknown person. The beauty of the world lies in the, the diversity of its people. Obviously, as I just mentioned in the previous slide, the more diverse, the more diverse your people are, the more views will come to your table. So everybody coming from the same location will sort of have a set background and based on the set adaptation, orientation, cultural orientation, they will tend to think in a similar way, tend to think. And if you move out of that comfort zone and if you bring people from different parts of the world, different ethnic background of the world, different religious background of the world, then you will get new understanding. It will be a lot more exciting in the sense that perspectives are so different, so different. For example, I am sitting in Dhaka, you are sitting in Canada or UK or anywhere else. My thought process and your thought process may have similarity, but there will be significant differences on certain issue. For example, problem solving domain. I might be addressing an issue in a particular way. You might be addressing the same issue from a different angle. Does It does not mean that my way is the better way, your way is the worst way or vice versa. It doesn't go like that. It's, no, it's not uh, so, what should I say? It's not so linear. Uh, the thought processes, the ways of looking at things, uh, the ideas and understanding are very complex in certain cases. So we have to be able to accommodate the diversity in our thoughts, diversity in our ethnicity, diversity in our people management. So as a leader, it's absolutely vital that we move forward with an understanding that more diverse the organization is, the more diverse your, your stakeholder community is, the more challenge it brings to you and also opportunities for you. We have to also realize managing a homogeneous community is easier than managing a heterogeneous community. Homogeneous meaning uh, people are of the same background, more or less. Whereas heterogeneous means people are coming from different backgrounds. It might be educational, it might be ethnic background, it might be cultural background, it might be backgrounds on knowledge and academic learning. For example, I might be an engineer and you might be a philosophy graduate. Uh, if a situation arises which is people-centric, my thinking might be slightly analytical as to, I might try to break it down into, into manageable pieces. You might be considering a slightly different and altered way. You might be considering a holistic perspective and you might be looking at it from the perspective of, let's say, uh, what is the underlying communication that is flowing in this discussion first? And I might be looking at it as in a slightly different way. So this is very important to understand that this diversity in culture, diversity in your organization, diversity in your social and political life is needed. It will bring in new color. It will need, add a new blend uh, of understanding and a new blend of or ray of hope for the organization, be it a social organization, business, or political. Moving forward, this is by Ruth Benedict. Uh, what it says is that the crucial differences that distinguishes human societies and human beings are not biological. Uh, they are cultural, and it's absolutely true. What uh, this uh, definition is trying to say is that when people in one part of the world, let's say people living in Alaska, 
will have a different mindset, will have a different philosophy of their living based on their surroundings, based on their environment, based, based on their thousands of years of cultural orientation in their land, which is in Alaska, let's say, whereas somebody in Bangladesh or somebody in New Zealand or Australia or Papua New Guinea would have a different set of understanding of the geo-economic geo conditions, uh, societal conditions. I will have a very different set of domains to move around, whereas somebody living in Alaska or somewhere else will have a completely different set or partly different set of domain to move around. So my thought process will evolve based on the cultural orientation, based on the marketplace orientation, based on the um, family orientation that I'm living in. So they will be very different. So human beings are to be considered different, not based on their biological mindset, but based on their cultural mindset. I might be living in Bangladesh. Had I grown up in, let's say, uh, Kenya or in uh, New Zealand or some other country, my mindset will be shaped by the society in which I grew up, my schooling, my university life, my uh, work, work life, etc. So it will be a very different set of philosophy that I will table. Of course, it will be supported my family uh, values and orientation and norms, that's for sure. But assuming I'm there on my own and no family members are there guiding me in the particular principle in which I would have been guided had I been in Bangladesh. So I am thrown into a different society altogether, let's say at an early age and somebody living in Bangladesh even if that person is my own blood living here with the orientation and uh, under the guidance of my family, I would be growing up very differently than this person who is my own kith and kin, my own brother or sister living in Bangladesh. So it is absolutely based on the culture, based on the society, based on the fabric of society that's surrounding you and that will guide you in your direction of becoming a human being. So very different baskets of thought process are actually associated with how we move, we become a, a adult. So that's a very important statement. We must as leaders in society understand that it's not just that how you are connected with other people in the sense of just the uh, the physical appearances. It's it's not that. It's always based on the cultural adaptation and orientation that comes with you as a package. It's you can be considering uh, this as a package. You as the human being who is one component of the package, and the other component is your cultural pers persona, and that blending together will create the you within you, although you might be of similar uh, physical appearance, you might be very different in your mindset. For example, it's um, although this example may not be the right example, but a, a good human being versus a very bad murderous human being it, by just by physical nature, sometimes it's not uh, you cannot tell. You might think that the other person is very nice and sweet, whereas that person might be a murderous person. So it does not depend on the appearance, what I'm trying to say. It all depends on your orientation to life and how you had, how life had overtaken you in some ways that will decide who you are as a human being. Moving to the next slide, the last one by Robert Allen. Cultural differences should not separate us from each other. For example, um, I am from a different culture. I'm from the Islamic Muslim culture, let's say in Bangladesh, or the Bang Bang Bangali, a Bengali culture. It should not separate me from, say, say someone who is coming from an Anglo-Saxon culture, or a Christian culture, or a Hindu culture, or Buddhist culture, or no culture in the sense of the religious term, just a human being. It should not separate us. What should not, what should, it should be considered as the plates of energy 
from different places that we can bring together to create a better universe. Our strengths are slightly diverse from each other. We can bring all of these engagements, all of these passions, all of these cultural nuances and orientation and spiritual or religious belief system into our uh, thought process and evolve something constructively together, collaboratively. And that's how we can shape a better society. So shaping of better civilizations, shaping of better humanity is very much the art that a leader has to uh, understand and absorb and move along in that direction by bringing the strengths of people. Uh, so uh, this diversity is our strength. We have to give uh, due respect to diversity and work through the diversity. So the cultural diversity is actually bringing in strength and it's it's benefiting the entire humanity. We cannot be we cannot be thinking at all at the back of our mind that we want a organization that is going to be doing left and right in one in one string one thought process. It's not truly going to happen. We have to be able to manage our own understanding as to how we adapt to the perspectives of the people around us. So that's very important. So this definition is by Robert Allen. Let me move to the next one. Um, moving into the definition. We normally have a definition. Uh, here we are talking about leadership. So what is leadership? It is about, the, about understanding the cultural nuances of the team and forging ahead a collective outcome. Leadership potential is accelerated through collaboration and partnership. So what leadership is doing in terms of culture, in terms of our orientation and society, it is actually understanding the cultural differences, the different shades of cultural perspective that each human being brings to the table. We have to take that into understanding as a leader and as a team. If you are good at understanding the people perspective of your team, then it will be very easy for you to navigate and move to a higher plateau of um, collaboration and team building and partnership. It's all about collectively working towards an outcome. So if you are good at understanding the cultural nuances within, these, the, within the team, then it's easy to tap into the energy level of each person based on their cultural and orientation. And then you can bring out the output that the team deserves from this engagement. So that's very important. And the leadership potential is then accelerated. It, it is going faster through this type of engagement, through this type of collaboration and partnership. So as a leader, what I'm trying to say is you have to uh, be able to understand the, the buttons of energy within each person's mindset, mind each person's persona and each person's soul. So the cultural buttons, which are going to strengthen their resolve to do certain things, it has to be within your own grip. So you have to really know the person inside out in order to engage them into a positive, meaningful, beneficial and productive output. So that's absolutely vital. So a great amount of time should be spent by a leader, especially when you are joining in a new organization or bringing in new people into your organization, you must spend a decent amount of time trying to understand who this person really is. Um, normally, we try to get people through a long series of interviews, um, discussions with the person, because you don't want to bring in a person who is not the right fit and then worry about it for the next years or the next few months until you uh, bring somebody else. In other words, you get rid of this person and you bring somebody else. You don't want to go through that hassle. That is very disturbing in terms of the, the team, uh, team's uh, synergy, team strength, and time and value of money. Because uh, if leader is coming in a, in a particular domain and that person will drive the organization or the department in a certain way, and all of a sudden, 
there will be discontinuity in the thought process because you are not comfortable with how this person is engaging with the team because you didn't properly uh, have the proper uh, understanding of who this person that you're bringing in. And that is why you will see in many organizations uh, important positions are vacant because they are not being able to find the true leader that they are looking for, the leader who will fit into that role. That's what I'm talking about. So leadership is about bringing people who will fit into the role and who can who can make the, let's say, the flower blossom into a wonderful uh, outcome. So that's what we're looking at. Moving to the next slide. Culture and impact, as we know, Culture is the alma mater of who we are. Uh, it sort of guides who we are. In other words, it is the uh, it is the it is the ornament that is sitting on our human soul. And what is what this ornament does? It is it builds the strength of you as a citizen in this world. So, definitionally, what culture is? Culture is an umbrella term. It's, a, it's an over-encompassing term, which encompasses the social behavior, our behavior in society, and our norms found in human societies, as well as the knowledge and beliefs. So it's, a, it's an orientation of so many things. It is, it is not cosmetic at all. It is very much absolutely fundamental and ingrained within yourself, imbued within yourself. So if you are part of a particular culture, you will not be able to just get rid of the culture just because you have been shifted out of that culture and moved to another culture or another country. You will not be able to throw away your old practices so easily. So we, we must uh, understand that uh, when you are bringing in persons into your organization, be it a social business or political organization, you have to understand who you have brought in what this person represents, where did this person come from, what is their knowledge base, etc. So it's not just academic knowledge, it's about knowledge about society, it's the knowledge about the person and his or her orientation in life. So that is important and, and that cultural orientation is so vital. And that is why um, behavioral training in any organization is a very important part. And through behavior change mechanism, uh, things can slowly evolve. As I mentioned, one cannot just quickly uh, engage in any behavioral change training all of a sudden, behavioral change program. It takes years and years. And that is why uh, it's one of the most sticky things that a manager uh, has to deal with. Uh, it's just very, very difficult to change someone's behavior and therefore the reason for having these type of sessions are very important, especially when you're dealing with uh, important uh, roles that needs to be uh, championed by people who has the capacity to adapt and be very oriented towards the diversity. In those type of functions, you want people who are who are who are truly and uh, a person who truly understands that. Uh, Diversity is the game in this in, in this particular role, and you have to be adaptive to it. So these type of cultural changes and nuances and beliefs and perspectives a leader has to be uh, having within himself or herself, and that leader has to show forth these traits, and so that others around the leader can also learn. It is not just about you having the traits and you practicing it. It is also about being able to communicate visibly your thoughts, your understanding, so your guidance and your principle and your vision uh, are to be shared in amongst your stakeholders, amongst your uh, compatriots who are working with you. And that is how you shape the organizational dynamics through proper cultural uh, positioning. Uh, and then you will ultimately get a better outcome. So what are the impacts that we'll, we actually gain from culture? The first is our behavioral and communicational change impact. We are, we try to become a better communicator, understanding the cultural 
issues of the organization and our behavior is better reflected because of this understanding. Our thought process are evolves, our thought process, how we think things. Uh, when, you are, when you are a manager and dealing with people from let's say 50 countries, obviously you will have different dimensions of people working with you from whom you can absorb a lot of understanding, a lot of cultural issues, a lot of professional issues, et cetera, which might be differently done in your part of the world. But when you have people working with you from 50 different nations, it will be a very exciting an opportunity for you to pick up these cultural nuances and learn it and, and apply it within your personal development and how you run your organization. So very important thought process changes when you are uh, impacted through diff a diverse culture. And conceptual understanding of how to attack certain things, uh, particular views uh, also gets altered due to your cultural orientation to a diverse community of people with whom you are working. So what we want to bring from this slide is that we have to be cognizant, we have to be knowledgeable of the fact that people are different, people's mindset are different, they might look similar, but due to their differences in uh, you know, their rearing up, they will have different mindsets. So we as leaders, we have to be able to adapt to these different mindsets and push them with the right earnest. In other words, you have to be pushing them with the right buttons to get the right outcome. And that is based on your understanding of the culture and its impact in their behavior and in the mindset and in their thought processes. So moving to the next slide. Leadership and culture, they are obviously intertwined, they are related. Um, as we mentioned, that culture is cannot sit in a separate island and leadership can happen without the understanding and views that we can bring from cultural orientation. It is something that goes in unison. It is a collaborative endeavor. Although there are different differences in their shades, but somehow they are interconnected in the sense that if you are not a properly trained person in understanding culture, you will not be a proper leader, vice versa. If you want to be a pro proper um, cultural person, you have to have leadership traits in order to understand the differences and diversity amongst people. So they go hand in hand. It's like the hand and glove kind of things in your, your life you have to be able to manage both smoothly in order to be uh, feeling comfortable. So leadership evolves on cultural orientation, as we mentioned. When you are culturally oriented, you have to have a very good understanding of the diversity uh, that is out there in your organization. You are respectful, you are empathetic on those situations, and that's how uh, the people around you resonate with you. They will build their trust and warmth and they will produce better results. So leadership grows on values, which we talked about, the family values and the norms in, in the norms in which you actually grew up. In certain countries, um, there are very strict religious laws and a person growing up in that country will tend to have those rigid laws. They might be good or bad. I mean, not, we're not going into that direction because it's a personal space and I don't want to say anything on a personal, per one person's personal views, but they might be very rigid when you're comparing with another economy or another society. So bringing these two people together and trying to bring them to work together might be very difficult, but it's doable. And if you can uh, understand each other's uh, true, true, true uh, perspective and the principles on which they are sitting. And if you can respect them, then there is no problem in bringing them together and working them together. For example, um, there are people who are in, for example, uh, in Bangladesh, alcohol drinking is not a, a good thing for the Muslim community. So if you are working in an environment where everybody is, uh, you know, having alcohol left and right, it might be a difficult challenge for you, but if you have a proper communication with them that uh, I, I am with you, no problem, we'll hang out and do all of that, 
but I'll have my Pepsi or Coke and you can have your alcohol. So let's not push each other. I will not try to push you to not have alcohol because it's a, it's a common practice in your part of the world. And similarly, you will not push me to have alcohol I, I, and push me uh, as, as a person to stand out as somebody who's queer, who doesn't drink and vice versa. We don't want to do that. So that type of values uh, you have to culture within your organization. There might be people within your organization with differently motivated strength, people who are artistic in a different way. Uh, people or there are people who are dyslexic, but very, very bright people. So you have to be able to adopt and understand who you are teaming with and you have to give them the respect and then you will get the benefit that you're ex expecting from from that person. But if you are trying to push them into becoming a me too kind of person, then it may backfire. So as a leader, our job is to understand the people around whom we are going to be working and pick on their strength areas and play down on their weaknesses. I'm not considering the cultural issues to be part of their weaknesses, but I'm just saying that um, issues which are slightly different, which are uh, slightly not common, may not be pushed uh, and pricked. If you're pushing and, and asking that person to change certain practice, it might not feel good to that person. It might feel that you're going into their personal space and that will be very dangerous. So understanding that values might be slightly different. Obviously there are certain universal values that you want to inculcate, uh, the integrity, honesty, ethics, etc. But beyond that, people will have slightly different mindset and you have to be able to adapt them and be oriented to their value system so that you have a common ground of respect for all. And that is most important, having a common ground of respect across all nationalities, all domains, and all ethnic ethnicities uh, of people with whom you're working. The next point is leadership grows on knowledge and it is partly intuitive and intuitive partly and partly based on knowledge. Absolutely. Uh, there are people who are good in managing people and those are intuitively competent people in terms of their communication and leadership skills and they are very good and comfortable around even new people and there are people who takes a little bit of time to orient themselves in a new environment and you want to be a person as a leader you want to give the, those people the time of the day so that they can adapt themselves to the new orientation without throwing in some common perspective and throwing in your own value judgment that these persons are not quick at understanding things. It may not be that. This person might be slightly differently motivated and due to their culture and orientation in life, this is how they had evolved all through their years of experience and knowledge. They might be very witty, might be very sharp, but they are very uh, not coming out very quickly in front of the you know, team right away because they have been trained to be very, uh, you know, peaceful, calm, collected type of environment. So they, in maybe in those environment in which they had grown up, the issue of not promoting yourself is very much valued. Whereas in certain countries, uh, we all talk about, uh, we need to beat our own drums. For, for example, if you are reading strategy or marketing related documents that, that are penned by US authors or European authors, you will see slight differences. But if you compare the US author in terms of uh, what is important to be a good business manager, you will mostly see that they are talking about being out there, engaging in people, uh, pushing people to do the right thing, uh, bring teamwork, etc. Whereas if you go come into Bangladesh or the Orient or this part of the world, the managers will be slightly more reflective. They will say that let this person evolve based on their own understanding and we will have to give them a little bit of space so that they can evolve. So there is certain changes in the philosophy in which both the managers are working here in Bangladesh versus let's say a manager in Australia or the United States. There will be slight differences. 
we have to be able to understand these uh, these issues and apply them in our common day-to-day uh, -day life so that we become a better evolved leader it's about leadership design and it's about the growth of you as a leader that counts at the end of the day so you have to be able to accommodate all of these people and knowledge is something which will be absolutely vital in driving you in um, managing people let's say you are uh, given an assignment in uh, let's say panama or panama or mexico and you have to obviously get yourself oriented with some of the cultural issues that is out there which are very strong in panama or mexico at that point you can't be going with a standard knowledge of society in which you have grown up and you you want you want to just export that knowledge export that culture and get them to work based on what you have picked up all your life that may not work at all that may shape certain changes but if you are not going with the common denominator then you might be unsettling the pond there will be a lot of ripples and you will see turbulence coming out and then everything may go haywire okay so that's very important so leadership and culture are intricately connected and as a leader we have to be able to understand that we need to blend these together in order to get the optimum output leadership in heterogeneous community this is the most complex environment heterogeneity means diversity in terms of people ethnicity culture religion etc so if you are running a big enterprise with hundreds of different people from different ethnicity religion uh, different communities etc they will have different mindset that is that is the reality of this world you cannot march them in one uh, way it will not work what you have to do is create certain common understanding common threads of understanding on which you will not vacillate these would be your universal sort of pillars on which you will proceed but based on the universal pillars people will have slightly different flowers blossoming around them in terms of their understanding of the, of their uh, society in terms of managing their resources it will be slightly different so the pillars would be strongly entrenched in this type of environment because if you don't have certain st structural domains which are based on your values ethics and norms then people may go in multiple direction and then the organizational uh, the this organization culture may be impacted negatively so you don't want to be too experimental in those cases but uh, you will also be able you must also allow certain certain uh, alterations and change in behavior based on the cultural perspective that the person brings to the table so that's very important so adaptive with good understanding of cultural values and culture very important extend extensive tailored trainings obviously behavioral change training uh, tra trainings on communications on uh, different perspective of that per particular country in which you are bringing people in you have to be able to understand the country perspective the market perspective and you have to be able to understand the different people who are working with you so bringing in uh, cultural issues from each country and having maybe cultural exchanges amongst the people would facilitate a more homogeneous uh, understanding and development of your own leadership practice in that organization organized dialogues and friendly exchanges absolutely if you are uh, sitting on different silos of thought process something that we talked about in my previous session then uh, things will go uh, very much inefficient why because you might be thinking in certain domains uh, where the next per person with whom you are not uh, culturally attuned to they are thinking of certain things in a different domain whereas you're supposed to be working on a particular project together but due to your cultural silos that you are sort of created a uh, invisible wall you're not conveying with each other you're not communicating so 
these these invisible walls have to be broken down through inter exchange through tailored cultural trainings uh, and friendly exchanges and dialogues so that's very important run project team mocks through trainings obviously case analysis uh, getting people to do certain assignments uh, on these trainings are very important uh, bringing six people or five people together in your team giving them assignments for the next one or two days or a certain time that they will have to sit together uh, discuss issues amongst themselves and that's how the environment uh, truly shapes within an organization you get to know who the other person is and how to connect with them with the inner core so that you can build a productive outcome uh, otherwise things will not evolve so this is very important for the leader to bring and facilitate those behavioral change dynamics communicate with a easily understood common denomination language of course you might be coming from a different culture and you're the manager and if you are talking in your uh, common, com your common language that you talk with your own people all the time, then some of these uh, terms will not be understood by your team members who are coming from other ethnic backgrounds. So you have to be able to speak in a manageable fashion so that it is appropriately understood by all who are connected with your organization. You don't want to be sounded like somebody who's speaking Greek uh, to someone who is supposed to be listening to your orders. They will not function. They will, they will close down. They will feel that, am I in the right environment? Uh, some of these people might be shy. They may not come out and talk to you. And you might think that everybody is going very nice and smooth and everything is going nice and dandy, whereas these people are suffering from internal uh, frustrations because they are not being able to communicate and properly understand you. So you have to be speaking at a language pattern which is uh, which is acceptable to all. The next point, celebrate community days, bringing perspectives from heterogeneous communities. Absolutely. Uh, for example, you might be uh, sitting in an environment where you have people from 100 countries and you are sitting in your own country. For example, I am in Bangladesh right now and we, are, we just had the uh, victory day on 16th or uh, 16th of December in Bangladesh. So if I had people from 50 countries in my organization, I might do my victory day in a nice fashion. Nobody is going to stop me, but I might also have a, a discussion on a, on an open day uh, on the days of victory of their own country. So this will give some kind of uh, comfort to people who are coming from different countries and different culture to speak about their uh, communities, to speak about their their own culture, uh, the, the the moments of glory that they hold uh, tr hold true within themselves that makes them proud. Those issues can be tabled, and that type of engagements and dynamics would actually facilitate a better harmonious engagement within your organization. Synergy. The word we talk about synergy all the time, the synergistic effect will be greater when you are bringing in the uh, thought process of different people mm -hmm. and talking about those in your own organization and giving them the comfort and respect for who they are. And that will be very powerful. So these are to be done. Uh, enable adaptive cross-cultural dialogues, which we talked about before. So. Uh, Dialogues are absolutely vital. If you are having proper dialogue with your team members, then ultimately uh, you will see an opportunity developing within your organization. And you are actually not only working with your own set of ideas, additional ideas will, will be coming forth. People will be so much excited to bring in new ideas to, to the table because they have championed the process. They feel they're part and parcel of the system. Uh, the whole point of proper leadership is to blend people in in such a way with your organization that they start to feel that this is my organization. And whatever I'm doing is for my benefit and the benefit of my team, my my department, etc. You You sort of have a very powerful connect with the products and services that you are um, bringing out from your organization. 
everybody is lined up with this passion to drive success for the organization. And that is the ultimate outcome, the ultimate brilliance that we can shape or bring forth for our organization, our communities and our country. So as a leader, we have to be constantly evolving in these domains. Uh, please note that this is not a one-off thing that you do once every year and you, you believe that uh, two days of very serious cultural adaptation training and behavioral change communication training, things will evolve. And the next year, same time, you'll have another session. No, uh, you might have one or two larger sessions where you can actually throw in a lot of uh, new ideas or sort of cultural issues, that's fine. But every quarter, you should have a mini session, maybe half a day session or a one day session to reorient themselves to the learnings that they should be bringing into the table and the cultural issues and the nuances of culture, cultural issues should be tabled along those quarters. So you are constantly reminded that it is about bringing diversity in people that will strengthen and shape the organization forward. There are organizations which are very culturally diverse and there are organizations which are not at all culturally diverse I'm not to say here, I'm not here to make a value judgment, but from a logical point of view, it may seem that if you can harness the strength of a diverse culture, people from a diverse culture, more outcomes can actually come because people coming from diverse culture definitely will have different views and mindsets. And if you are a very smart leader, you if you can get them to associate with your team spirit, then new ideas will pop up from different parts of your organization coming from people of different culture. And that's when you, the strength of the organization will truly uh, come about. Moving to the next slide. Driving social success. Uh, this is absolutely important. As a leader, you want business success. As a community leader, you want social. As a political leader, you want social success. Even business leaders want social success in the sense that they want people around them to feel comfortable uh, in in the greater societal context that they are working with, the, the, the leader with whom they are oriented with, they can talk about them in a positive light, etc. So if you are a leader, you want social success, obviously you have to be able to manage the cultural perspectives. Of, of the people. So that is why we're talking about breaking cultural communication boundaries. If you're very, very strict and you don't want to uh, go anything beyond your work practice, then maybe your organization might be mechanical, they might be operative, but in the greater sense of the term of really team up, uh, teamwork and collaboration, you may not be right there. You might be falling short. So you need to uh, break out of that shackle and you want to be a better uh, manager in terms of breaking down communication barriers. So work outside personal silos, we just talked about it. You need to work outside your own construct, your own thought process, own your vision. You must be able to listen to other people, get their feelings in, get their perspectives in, engage in intelligent discussion, and that's how you uh, break the personal silo bar barriers. Promote others, this is absolutely important. Uh, if you are a leader and if you're always promoting yourself, you will never have business or social success. When you can bring other people together then, uh, and promote them, then success will be yours because they will start promoting you. So that's the old point. Promote others so they feel uh, respected and they will start respecting you by promoting you as well. Work on winning trust. We have been talking about trust all throughout the session, all throughout our leadership session. Unless you build trust within your team, things will not pan out as you plan. It's absolutely vital building the trust and it doesn't happen overnight. It's not a uh, you know one night a thing that you push very hard uh, amongst your people, certain ideas, and then you, will, you think the next morning they will all trust you. It is a process, it'll take a long time. But if you're always there chipping away, then people will start building trust in you. It's very important. Continuous communication is absolutely vital. Communication between boundaries, between people, between departments. 
uh, different ethnic communities. That's the whole process of stakeholder engagement. It's about extending communication between uh, different people to bring everybody together on the same plate. Absolutely important. Continuous communication and being innovative and creating in collaboration. All of these together will create a better environment for you to collaborate amongst yourself. And this, the whole practice is to be ingenious. The whole practice has, has to be based on creativity and innovativeness. So you as a leader, you must not just be thinking in terms of just uh, ABCs of certain things. You have to go beyond and understand that based on the cultural nuances, you have to be very adaptive and innovative in shaping the structure of the future of an organization. And that's how the organizational design has to be, uh, organizational design has to be created within the organization to move the organization to the next level, the next plateau or platform. So absolutely vital for a leader is to also drive social success as a human being outside of the work practice. And when you are having those type of perspectives within your organization uh, and people sort of sees you and believes in you, then you will be actually truly uh, becoming, you will truly become a successful leader in your domain. So with that, I think we come to the million dollar question. Normally we are, I end with a million dollar question and today's million dollar question is, do leaders need to transition into a heterogeneous workforce when homogeneous workforce had so far worked for them? Very crucial question. What it's trying to say is, or ask is, do we need to move into a heterogeneous, very culturally diverse work environment when your homogeneous environment had been working so far? The answer is yes and no, but I think the answer is more yes, because the world is changing. We are getting people from different diverse communities coming together and uh, migration due to immigration and migration. We are going to be seeing a lot more transition in terms of people, um, the makeup of the people of let's say United States or Bangladesh 100 years back was different in terms of the people who are uh, the citizens of that country. Now it's slightly changed. So you all obviously have to adapt to the market space changes in terms of the people dynamics. You're, you have different ethnic background people. Uh, for example, if you talk about the United States, um, the Mexican community, the, the the Chinese American community, the Indian American, uh, and other, the African American community is rising in terms of the population base. So you have to be able to bring certain people from their community because understanding that they are your people or, and citizens of your of the particular land. So you cannot be uh, having one set of people driving the organization forward. It will be questionable uh, at a given point in time. So having a diverse workforce will blend new ideas together. That's for sure. We talked about it all throughout this session. So I don't want to drive further into that point. But the important point is that due to the makeup and the transition and change within your work, within your society, you have to adapt by bringing in these new people in from different diverse community and different religious background and ethnicity. And that's how you can actually have a love, lovely uh, heterogeneous environment, which might actually uh, strengthen your organization. Because for example, you have a product and which is selling in your country, but having people from different background from, and ethnicity, you might also connect back with some of the societies that they have a very predominant uh, or, uh, orientation to. For example, if you are working in Canada or in the United States, you are running an organization and you have a product which is coming into, let's say, uh, this part of the world, the Southeast Asia, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, this part of the world. So if you have two managers coming from this part of the world, it will be so much easier for you to navigate into this territory rather than having somebody who is who has grown up in Canada having no our United States having no understanding 
of the cultural issues that are out there in, let's say, this part of the world. It might take a long time. That person will have to be adapted uh, and will have to learn to adapt to this culture for at least one year or six months before they can become uh, efficient and equipped to understand how to run the business transaction in that particular country. So bringing people from this part of the world into your organization, which is selling products and service into, let's say, Southeast Asia, would only make uh, business sense. So having a heterogeneous community based on your product is also an important issue to consider. So if your product is selling in one particular do domain and you are very content, normally it's not the case uh, that you should be content because the whole idea of business or any organization is to grow. That is the whole idea of all living organization, organs, that the whole idea is to grow. No living organization considers and contemplates on reducing their strength, reducing their size. It's always about growing their strength, growing their station. So it's a human inborn type of trait. So I would suggest that you bring in more heterogeneity in your organization so that you can actually uh, impregnate the idea of innovation and also the understanding and the support that is needed to grow your organization within your own enclave in which you're doing your transaction and in your business. So I think I would be shooting for a more heterogeneous organization versus a homogeneous organization for my organization to grow into the next uh, decade or so. So based on the shift and the transition of humanity, common humanity, I would be shaping my organization. So with that, I would like to end today's session. And thank you very much, everyone, for listening in. Listening in. And once again, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I want to take my presentation back to Edward Kobe Mongol. The floor is back to you, Edward. All right, thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, today, as uh, we discuss about leadership and culture, and I was very wonderfully presented by Advocate Jia Rahman. With that, I conclude you know today's sessions. Thank you very much. Those who are being with us today, uh, you know that we are um, conducting this session every week. So we are offering, we are inviting you for our next session next week. So uh, we are actually conducting these sessions every Wednesday in Canada at um, 9 p.m. and Mountain Standard Time, which is Edmonton, Calgary, and in uh, Eastern Standard Time, which is uh, Ottawa, uh, Toronto, it'll be at 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. In Dhaka, Bangladesh, it is um, on Thursday morning at uh, 10 a.m. And Indian Standard Time, it is uh, uh, 8.30, uh, 9.30 in the morning on Thursday. So with that, you know, I would like to um, thank uh, all the audience for your, um, for those who are with us and uh, we welcome you to visit our page. And if you have any comments, you can also um, comments on our page and also email us to info at prerona.tv. With that, thank you very much and stay safe and stay blessed.